big thanks to MSI for sending out their RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio, which is based on Nvidia's newest generation of Ampere GPUs. The Ampere GPU architecture is Nvidia's latest, comes with the RTX 30 series, and will greatly boost the performance of games that support ray tracing and AI technologies. The Gaming X Trio is one heavy beast and the longest one I've ever used, coming in at 323 millimeters to fully support its features. For anyone nervous that it might bend because of its size, MSI has not only included a support bracket, but also reinforced the board with additional metal support. It's got three Torx 4.0 fans for improved airflow across the heatsink, which by the way, you can barely hear. They really are silent. On top of this, they've added a heat pipe running next to the back plate made out of graphene. So not only is the card built to last for a long time, it keeps the GPU cool under longer gaming sessions. To show what MSI and Nvidia have done, I decided to compare my old 1080 with the Gaming X Trio. Alongside my GPUs, I will be using my Ryzen 3900X. And just before we continue, the game that I main is very CPU based and will not be able to use all the features of the 30 series. So, to make it more interesting, I also included Valorant and Apex Legends to the mix. Right now, as a competitive player, it is more important for me to get 240 FPS stable to fully support my 240Hz 1080p monitor. The advantages of using a 240Hz monitor with the game running at 240 FPS is being able to track enemies easier, there's less distracting effects, and I'll also be able to spot enemies earlier. I could also lower the video settings and even the resolution solution to get higher FPS, but that is really not what I want to do. The main goal with the Gaming X Trio is to be able to play on high FPS at 240Hz while capturing some nice looking footage with Nvidia Shadowplay. Of course, I'd also like to try out some new titles with ray tracing like Cyberpunk when it drops unless it gets delayed again. So for CSGO, I started benchmarking the 1080 with the benchmarking script made by Sam. I calculated the rough average FPS that I could get based on multiple runs and the amount resulted into 357. In short, that is some very good results, but with MSI's 3080 without overclocking, I managed to climb over 400 with 404 as my final results. This gave me a 12% performance boost, which is still an impressive boost from a CPU oriented game. Since my numbers are way above 240, I obviously needed to stress test the cards in some way. As we all know, our computers are not so fond of Dust 2 deathmatch with lots of players. That's when the FPS dips like crazy. So this is with my 1080, when there's a lot of action going on, I cannot consistently maintain above 240. Also when these dips happen, it messes with my muscle memory and it's no longer a smooth experience. For this scenario using the 1080, I would have to sacrifice quality for performance and lower some of my settings. Now, how about the MSI's 3080? Happy to report that it rarely dipped under 240, and this is with the highest settings on a full server. It felt really smooth and almost surreal. This means that I can use Shadowplay with the highest settings without it affecting my raw abilities. And for a regular 5v5 game, it should handle it no problems. Now on to Valorant. I'm not usually playing Valorant, I don't even have a rank, but Nvidia Reflex is supported for this game, so that's that's nice. With the 1080 standing still in the practice area, using of course the highest settings, my average is around 460 in the target range practice room, and for MSI's 3080, that number goes up to about 560. The general peaks are also interesting going from 484 to 595. So based on peak, it is roughly a 19% performance boost. Once again, the numbers are way higher than 240, so does it really matter? Well, playing deathmatch on Valorant, I was struggling to get 240 plus stable even with the 3080. Lowering the settings, it kind of managed to go a bit higher on the peak, but it was still struggling to go consistently above 240. I wanted to make sure it wasn't just deathmatch, so I queued for a regular spike rush game, which is 5v5. It was still bouncing around like crazy. This is a bit disappointing in regards to my 240Hz monitor. I would have hoped for Valorant to be on the same level as CS.
CSGO. But to end Valorant on a good note, it supports NVIDIA Reflex, as I previously mentioned, which is compatible with the RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio. NVIDIA Reflex, for those that are unaware, reduces your system latency, which makes your PC more responsive to mouse input. This is really useful for competitive players as it allows yourself to react faster. Speaking of other features really quickly, NVIDIA Broadcast, which turns your background into whatever you want so you don't need a green screen anymore. And there's also Noise Removal, which mutes everything in the background except for when you're talking. This stuff is pretty cool. And no, I don't normally live stream, but with this feature, I am more than happy to try it out. Finally, the last game I wanted to compare, which is way more GPU bound Apex Legends. On highest settings, while flying above the map, the FPS on average was going from 80 down to about 75. And with MSI's 3080, I finally started noticing some huge improvements, starting at 143 down to about 138. That's pretty much a 45% performance boost. On the ground, the 1080 is ranging between 90 to 130, and the lowest amount for the 3080 is around 130. It's still really impressive, and I still have not overclocked it. Apex also supports NVIDIA Reflex, so that itself makes the whole experience more smooth, and for multiple playthroughs, I haven't experienced any dips that would otherwise affect my raw abilities. So there you have it. The RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio is a beast that I haven't even used to its fullest potential. It is definitely a worthy upgrade to my 1080. With this card, I will now be able to play and capture shadow play footage on the highest settings, try out streaming, and experience new titles with ray tracing. For more information on the card, check the link in the video description. Make sure you give the video a like to support my content, subscribe if you want to see more from me, stay awesome, and go bananas.